Hi guys, so I got some little different here with this driver circuit powering the jewel ringer circuit. I got some gauges on the inputs and uh, I'm going to show it charging this big cap bank. It's fully charged at about 105 volts. It's uh, just under 31 right now. So here's a positive going in, 24 volt battery. It comes down through this meter. Wire comes out into the input of the driver circuit. Here's the negative, goes right to the battery right there. Then the output of the driver circuit is right here, positive and negative. Negative goes right here to the emitter of the transistor. Positive is right here, comes out, goes in through this meter here. So this meter is on the output of the driver circuit and this one's on the input. And I'll show you what the voltage is coming out of the driver circuit up here on the graph. It'll be on the bottom is the input. <clears throat> this is a flyback battery, this 12 volt battery right here. Here's a negative going to that. And that's the positive. It goes. It's actually hooked up already there. So I'm going to turn this on now and we'll take a look at some currents and voltages. So there it's on. Pulling 200 milliamps on the input and almost 300 on the output of the driver circuit here. So let me turn this off. You'll see these gauges are accurate. Stupid wires in the way here. They're at zero. One again. See it's charging. And here's the output voltage of that driver circuit. It's 31 volts. See right there. Bring that down. Because that spike right there is what's powering it. That's what's coming out of the driver circuit. That's it right there. 30.8. Yeah, 31.2. Right at the bottom there. So that's what's and down here where it levels off is uh 22.4 and then the back spike coming out of it is up here and that's 18.75 volts and the frequency is usually around like once the voltage climbs up a bit in here you're gonna, you'll see the, the frequency will rise to about 11.7 kilohertz. It's at 8 right now. This circuit is uh, 6 kilohertz is what it pulses at. With this cap, it's the 332. 3.32 UF. So you can just keep an eye. You can see the currents there's more on the output stupid hand makes it good blurry oh, pinned it so here we're about 350 milliamps on the input and just under 500 on that one At these lower voltages here on the cap bank is where it's the most efficient where you get the most gain as it rises it levels out but there's never any point where where the input is higher than the output it's either equal or less see there's 100 on the 
output and it's about 75 on the input and as you raise it that difference grows see here we're way over a hundred we're just under 400 here and we're over 500 there that's 500 and we're under 400 here It'll charge is hard like that. There's some back EMF, 2.5 watts of back EMF and 7.8 going in, 7.9, and it's charging hard. It's charging that cap bank up fast. Well, it takes me almost an hour to drain it with those two light bulbs. Two microwave oven light bulbs. Like I said, this down here is the current, uh, the voltage that's going through that meter. So there's a big gain with the the way this coil reacts with the frequency. It doesn't work with. Well, I can't say it doesn't work. It just doesn't work as good as this one does. This frequency with this cap it still works with others but not as good as the higher frequencies and that's the waveform Just brought the frequency up a bit. Still getting pretty good results like that. It's charging nice. still has a decent amount of back spike spurt the frequency up a little bit more almost at 9 kilohertz now Getting about the same same efficiency though. Pretty close. As this voltage climbs, the gap between these two closes. It it'll become one to one. As this gets around 70, 80 volts, that's where it'll be the same. So we're getting about 110 milliamps extra on the output. I was charging this cap bank up pretty fast. It's not easy to charge this up. That's pretty good.
you can see it's it's as it, the voltage rises the gap narrows a lot of copper on the ringer circuit everything stays cool though nt56 and the normal driver circuit completely cold it's not much power going through it though eight watts but it's quiet too you don't really hear it until the voltage in the cap bank gets higher than then you hear it Hear a little ringing as you turn it up, but it's just another thing I, I really like to use this for. This circuit's just a plain circuit; doesn't have the PNP turning the NPN on and off because there's no Hall effect. It just has the timing circuit running the NPN. And some uh, 007 diodes, four of them parallel together. That's another thing too. You have to use those diodes that are equivalent, like higher amperage, but same type. Shot key diodes don't work. That's where a lot of people make mistakes. You gotta use the right diodes. I don't know why, but shocky diodes, it's just like they're, I don't know if it's the, the voltage or what, but I've never had a really good result with flyback energy with those type of diodes. Even the fast, the fast switching, they don't work very good. These are the mid, mid range. The ones Bedini said to use, that's the ones these are. And uh, I think the 5339, if I remember right, that's the other one that works really good. But thanks for watching guys, really appreciate it. Thanks for the new subs also guys.